What's up, y'all? Um, so, super excited. Um, caught a striper yesterday um, out of Columbus, Georgia. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, I've been skunked the last few times we've gone fishing. We've caught some bluegill, um, so I guess I shouldn't say completely skunked. And bluegill are fun to catch, um, but I really enjoy uh, eating food and um, eating from the bounty of what nature provides for us. Um, I, I do love to catch and release fishing, too. Um, so don't think that every time I go fishing, uh, I'm just hawking away as much as I possibly can. Um, but the reason, big part of the reason I hunt and I fish is I love eating very natural, organic food. Um, nothing, I, I, if I can avoid the grocery store, I like to avoid the grocery store. Um, obviously there's things I can't make myself, like I don't have uh, fields of wheat to be able to grind up and make my own bread and stuff like that. Um, but we do buy a lot of uh, very unprocessed things and make our own stuff at home. Uh, we'll do some future videos on our garden uh, once it gets going a little bit more. It's just kind of in its seedling stage right now still. Um, but anyway, uh, I wanted to go ahead and I caught the striper yesterday. Um, I've got it just in a bucket of ice. We got home very late. Uh, so I, we had been out there. We went out to have dinner with my in-laws um, and we hung out for a little bit. Archie! My dog's getting into something. Archie! Leave it alone. Um, so anyway, we went out to have dinner with them, and then we hung out with them for a little bit until they had to drive um, back home from there, which was about a three and a half hour trip. Uh, and so uh, we went fishing after that, and I started off with all my bass lures, um, and I wasn't catching anything. I was watching these guys on the dock next to me just catch stuff left and right, uh, and I was getting super frustrated. Um, so, uh, but... Um, Anyway, um, I'll, I'll throw the video in here so y'all can watch. Hey y'all, and welcome to another video of Bollinger Outdoors. Uh, this is a quick video, uh, catch and cook of me out in Columbus, Georgia, hunting for some striper. Uh, this first part of the video is basically me just missing or not catching fish uh, because I was using the wrong tackle. I had uh, all my bass tackle with me, and uh, I'll usually... Striper will hit that kind of stuff. Um, I had spinner baits, buzz baits, swim baits, all sorts of jigs and stuff, um, crank baits, but I just couldn't get them to hit. Uh, and you'll see here in a second me talking to some locals about that, um, and uh, and then switching tactics. So I'm not catching anything. I'm using the wrong tackle. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> stripes and hybrids will hit that. Just right now, when they're shad running, they'd rather eat the shad. That's just it. Yeah. I brought a cast net, but I'm not as ballsy as oh. <laughs> him to get down there and throw it. <laughs> Maybe I'll go down to the grass and try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so at that last point I basically had enough. Um, and here uh, I had moved down the pier a little bit, and thankfully I had my cast net in my, in my truck with me. So um, we threw that on. Uh, forgive my very poor casting cast net huh? technique here because... It's not pretty, uh, but it did the job. Uh, I've actually thrown it, it once before this, but I, I forgot to turn the GoPro on. Uh, but essentially, uh, we were able to grab some fish and uh, we'll see how that worked out for us. Yeah. <laughs> One bunch from the shelf. We have a lot of them. Come back up. <gasps> yes! Got a couple more. Oh, they're dropping them. They're going to get you. No, they're not. Five, six. You're on six right now. Yeah, let's, let's work with these and see if I can. No, no, Alright, so now I had switch techniques and I was 
trying to snag some striper on the shad that I was able to pull out with the net. Um, I, I've been watching guys pull fish in left and right while I was casting all my pass baits just over and over and over again to no avail. Um, so as you'll notice, I actually hooked um, that first one up uh, kind of just under the spine, um, kind of a traditional... I guess minnow presentation, um, and I ended up switching that up. The tide's um, actually going down. A little bit. I hooked it almost like like a swim jig, um, like a soft plastic swim jig, or like a swim bait sort of ordeal. Um, and when I did that, it seemed like the striper were more responsive to it. I think the fish in the water just looked more like a natural presentation. Um, so I'll let y'all watch and see what happens. Man, I can feel the current. All right. Uh, uh, did I finally get one? Oh no. Never mind. <laughs> Got all excited for nothing. Uh oh. Is, is everything okay? Yeah, oh, yeah it's fine. a line instead of a fish. There you go. <laughs> no. And then, then I thought we could go home. <laughs> we live like an hour and a half east of here. The one that just jumped right there? Yeah. I thought you were pulling it in. Dude, they keep on hitting it. I dropped it in there. Crazy to watch the tide go down and know how far we are from the ocean. Huh? So it's crazy to watch the tide go down and know how far we are from the ocean. Oh, that's not you, right? I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh man. Should have brought a net, Maddie. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Finally. Whoa. Oh yeah, you're gonna bite me, aren't you? Woo. Oh. All right. I can feel the judgment already in how I've handled this fish. So let me just say I'm not proud of it. Um, maybe that'll help some. Uh, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just, I, I don't. I, maybe I'm just a little out of practice. Um, I was in the woods a lot more last year than I was on the water. Um, but uh, we finally got the fish up eventually. And um, it went around a whole bunch. You'll see a little bit. I almost dropped it on my kids. Um, but... Uh, it was it was a fun time. Man, I love listening to my kids get excited about it. Um, and uh, once I can get my daughter over the fear of catching a fish, um, she's really good at catching bluegill and she likes doing that. But um, bigger fish, she's a little bit worried about. So I'm looking forward to getting her out there and, and helping build her confidence and get her over that. Uh, and uh, yeah, but anyway, really love this fish. All right. Okay. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> do you want to take? It? Huh? Do oh, do you guys have a scale? Yeah. Not that this is a record breaker, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think we need that. But, but thank you. Is there a size limit on striper? Uh, Out of the so. river? Yeah. Oh, he's a cute little two pound. Do you need another <laughs> it's a good fight, though. Right? Yeah. Two eight. Two eight. Okay, so I did verify there is not a size limit on striper. Um, just in case anybody wants to uh, worry about that or comment about it, um, it's okay to keep the smaller fish. So, and uh, it was really good eating, and uh, you'll see that a little bit later in the video. Oh, thank you. You already got one for me. No problem. What? No problem. I need a one. Dude, I ran back to my truck. 
How much battery do you have on your phone? Decent amount. Can I call my mom back on yours? I don't even have yeah. a ship Yeah, we can call the station. Oh, yeah. What are you running? It's pretty much just like a small game. Thank you, guys. All right, so changing the way I had the fish hooks made a difference. I know, if we try to catch one more, that'll be a good time for us. So do you need it more by, like, the tail? No, I had it hooked, like, in the spine. Um, there we go. How's it going? Good, man. I didn't get skunked today. First time in, like, five times out fishing. <laughs> Oh. Oh man. Is that my fault? No, no, no. no I mean, it just came off. There we go. We're good? Yep, we're good. That was one thousand. All right, so. That was pretty epic. All right, there we go. Is that dead? It is dead, Maddie. Yep. All right, so there's our striper. All right. I guess I should rinse. It's been a little bit since I've done a, a good at a fish, so. Hey gum, look at that. You got some you got some bait in there. <laughs> that's pretty crazy to that's pretty crazy to see. Huh. And that's the reason I uh, was able to catch it, because I was trying everything, but until I grabbed these shad and put it on there. Thing. All right, y'all, I apologize for my terrible camera angles. I'm still learning a bit, a, uh, a lot, about camera angles and, and doing this YouTube thing right. So uh, I'll be sure in future videos to make sure I have better angles and show y'all what I'm doing. Um, but hopefully, hopefully this is still cool and y'all still enjoy it. Huh? trying to fillet this fish and hopefully not completely butcher it and ruin it. <laughs> sure there's gonna be people watching this that are mortified but you know I think everybody needs to learn how to do this and I think we've been a little too negative in our culture with looking down on people that don't know how to do stuff, right? Like, everybody's got to learn how to do stuff, right? If you want to get good at it, take a practice. There's always going to be first times. <clears throat> and the first times are never going to be as good as the 50th and 60th time, right? Yeah. I think we should be more positive about people trying stuff to get splattered. Huh? Oh, the, the blood? Yeah. Yeah, no big deal. And you got a little, and you splattered on my arm a little bit. Yeah, you'll be fine. Should we throw the rest of the fish in a pot and make some fish head stew? Yeah. Yeah?
smart. <laughs> One full egg. Dad, look. I you know what's it's crazy it's is the belly in here didn't have as much meat in it. it There's a good amount of meat on that back strap kind of slice thing, but. Dad, look, I just took this down. Side one. Cool. Right. Well, there's two fillets, and then uh, go ahead and cook them up. I'm gonna figure out how I want to cook them. I might actually save this head, make some stew. I really don't like wasting stuff, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into a pot. Hey, what's up, y'all? All right, we're gonna finish this thing out, um, this catch and cook with the striped bass um, striper uh, that we caught out of Columbus um, on Saturday. Uh, it's Tuesday now, um, bass been sitting in the fridge, it needs to be eaten. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all how I prepare it. Um, I've got a few other things I'm working on preparing with it, um, but hope y'all enjoy this. Uh, I'm gonna be super unhealthy today um, and actually use uh, some leftover bacon grease from this morning to fry the fish in. I'm just gonna do a real simple breadcrumb and Parmesan coating on it with some seasonings in it, um, some fresh ground black pepper, uh, some garlic powder, and some salt. Um, I might put a little paprika in it, um, maybe some dill, uh, and, uh, and we'll go from there. So, All right, now I am gonna clean the fish off um, and get the, the skin off of it. Uh, I'm not opposed to eating skin. Um, but let's not turn that one on. <laughs> um, but I didn't scale the fish, so um, make sure that's not gonna burn my. I don't want my cutting board to end up becoming one with my stove. All right, so so our two pieces of bass. You can see there's still scales on it. I probably should have scaled it, but I didn't. Too bad. A little bit of meat left on there, but not very much. Let's get these scales off here. Of course, I'm just going to rinse the fish when I'm done. And let me clean up these last little entrails. All done. And that's my spastic son in the background. You want to get all the white part off it's it's kind of like almost like silver skin on a deer um where that's what's going to make it taste gamey or fishy if you will i don't mind it so much but our kids the kids on the other hand are very sensitive to it <laughs> all right so there's one and there's this fish too oh my kids make a lot of noise all right, so I just got some Walmart Great Value breadcrumbs. Get those on there. And they're plain, because I like to season things myself. And then we're gonna take some garlic powder. Don't go overzealous with the garlic powder, because it, it, uh, it's got plenty of oomph. At least that Kirkland's one that we have does. Salt, um, I, I'm a little heavy handed with salt. But it doesn't help my blood pressure, but yeah. Pepper. And then we're gonna do a little bit of paprika, which honestly paprika doesn't have much flavor unless you get smoked paprika, um, but I like the color that it gives. Uh, and then lastly, uh, don't tell my daughter I'm putting this in there because she's a freak, but we'll do a little bit of dill. Not much, but just a touch. All right. We're just going to kind of mix that in just a little bit. Doesn't need a lot of mixing, just to kind of integrate it into all the breadcrumbs. Cool. Set that aside for a second. Probably need a little bit bigger bowl 
for the wash to make sure I can get it fully coated. Just one egg. And a dash of milk. Grab a fork, get that mixed up. And we should be good to go. All right, get this on. Cut a little bit of that bacon fat in there. Not gonna go overzealous with it. A little bit goes a long way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my fillets Give them a little dunk. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Hold on, hold on. This is wrong. <laughs> I need to I need to dry these off first, and then drying them off will help. Uh, will help that fit here better. That egg and milk mixture. So just pat dry them with a paper towel. And yes, I did just. Wipe off all the egg and milk mixture, but there should still be plenty on there. And we'll dip that in there. Try to get it nice and coated. And then uh, put it on here. Give it a good, make sure I get the edges nice. It's one of my pet peeves is when you gotta pan fry something with breadcrumbs. You don't get the edges real well. And so it all just kind of flakes off. Yeah. All right. It's so the first one, nice and coated. It's gonna be nice and crispy and delicious when it's cooked. Number two, grab a couple more paper towels. All right. And then we're just gonna pat pat dry it. Try to get as much of that water off of it and the liquid from it off. And then uh, I'm actually going to trim this little piece of. I'll show you what, I'll, what I'm doing right here. Trim this little piece of silver skin looking stuff off of it. Get that nice and coated. I think I might have put a little too much milk in here, but oh well, it'll work. This back out some and we'll go ahead and give that a dunk in there make sure it's all nice and evenly coated and I'll show you all in a little bit how I'm gonna check to make sure these are done because I think I mean if I'm out camping or outside I usually just kind of cook it till I think it's done, but usually it gets overcooked that way. Um, so what I'm going to do here is actually um, use a meat thermometer and uh, that way I ensure I get a nice even coat on it and get good even temperature, but I also make sure I don't dry it out. So I'll move these over here for a second so I can get my vegetables going. We're going easy vegetable dinner tonight, which is star of the show when you got kids um, so got our garden planted out back but it hasn't started producing yet otherwise I would cook some fresh veggies from that look for more videos on that later in the year um, my tomatoes haven't been doing too well I just I transplanted them too early but um, we should have some good green beans coming in and uh, and other good and other goodies uh, pans these cook because if I cook them in this pan, they're going to take forever. Alright. I'll we'll switch that over to the double side. And those do take a little bit just because they're ice cold. 
get started. All right, that bacon grease is nice and hot. Probably, honestly, probably a little too hot. I'm gonna turn that. I'm gonna turn this down to low when I put these in. There's a good sizzle. Turn it up a little bit. Mmm, mmm, that smells delicious. All right. <laughs> Let me, let me show you all this magic. There it is in the pan. Going at it. Y'all gotta forgive our messy counter. We got kids. Kind of a reality. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of this bacon grease on the outside. Make sure it gets nice and, nice and delicious. It's a low calorie meal, right? That's what I tell myself anyway. Alright, and I actually got a fish flipper finally. I didn't have one for the longest time. And this has made uh, flipping fish a lot easier. And another quick check, and that actually looks super delicious and good. Got that bacon grease kind of coated back over there. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Flaking nicely. This one. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually turn it down on it because I want it to cook a little bit slower. And I don't want that other side to burn while it's cooking. I'm going to give y'all a snapshot of it. And quinoa is still going. I'm going to give it a little, oh yeah, a little peek. That is good to go. I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to grab a fork and fluff that. thermometer, check and make sure this fish is about 145, at 130, 42, 48, good. This one's a little thinner, so it should be good for you. Yep, perfect. Pull those. One of my favorite parts about fish is how quick it cooks. Look at that, it's breaking apart. Oh, that's beautiful. That is a thing of beauty. Can't even really keep it together. Also, if you're freaking out, I'm using a metal, a metal utensil on this seemingly uh, tough arm looking can. It's actually a ceramic coating. It's meant for that, so. Mmm. How's that look? Appetizing? Delicious? I'm gonna go toss this on the table real quick, and I'll come back and. Up, put some pepper. Some salger, salt. I think salt. I think salger is Spanish for salt. Go ahead and put these on a bowl to serve. Ooh, this is messy. How do I get this out without being messy? They need to make. They need to make pans that have like. Like almost like pitcher edges on them. I'm getting you something dinner. Oh my goodness. Alright, we're gonna go set up at the table with my very noisy children and uh, try it out. Alright, we're gonna try this out. The ultimate test, because I've got a picky family. I'll eat pretty much anything. They, on the other hand, uh, have some. Uh, Aversions to certain things. Um, Y'all ready? Can you turn your attitude around? I know you don't feel super great, but let's let's turn our attitude around and be oh. kind of things. He said, "Hmm." All right. Let's hey, let's pray real quick, okay? God, we thank you for this food and the bounty, and just being able to catch it and have the opportunity to bring it home and cook it up and eat it. Pray that you bless this food to our bodies and bless all that we say and do. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Who's going first? You, you tried it, huh? You try another bite? Here. Take a bite. What do you think? On the job it looks. Is it yummy? Uh-huh. Here, honey. Uh, it's try some of them. Just a tiny bit. 
that she'll like you, okay? Tastes actually a lot like chicken. Right, hold on, hold on. Let's give you a little bit of couscous. The couscous has lots of um, Parmesan cheese in it. I said I like that. Okay. And then a little bit of vegetables. Ah. Hey, can you relax? It's good. Good? You like it? Mm hmm Dad, there is <laughs> more plates under this. It does just taste like fried chicken. <laughs> it really does. Huh. It has a... It has a slightly gamey flavor to it. It makes it stress more like me. But, it's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. Good. Alright, thank y'all for watching. Kimmy had a call to take. Um, fish is really good. Fish a little gamier than like tuna or skipjack and stuff like that. Um, but I do like it a lot. Um, I think next time I'd add a little bit of maybe an acidic, uh, maybe like some lime or lemon to it. I think we give it a little bit more flavor. Honestly, the fish in and of itself doesn't really have any flavor. All the flavors is built into the, the crust I made for it. So, um, it was good. It's really good with the couscous. Um, hope y'all enjoyed. We'll see you next time. You wanna say bye? You wanna say bye, Gunner? You say bye. Uh, Can you say bye? Mm -hmm. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>